it will be the biggest thing that's ever happened to the human species. It'll possibly be the end of the human species. It's just going to hit humanity like a truck. The president might not even know when the superintelligences exist. The company might not even know. They'll think, oh, there's this really exciting project where we've taken our latest coding model and we've had it do a bunch of AI research and then, oh, whoops, superintelligence. Now it's taking control of everything. Cocatello is known for impressively accurate predictions on AI, and his AI 2027 paper predicts our extinction if we don't change course. He gave up a lucrative career at OpenAI to speak freely. It's going to be like getting hit by a truck in terms of the scale and rapidity of the transition. Think about the history of colonialism. And there might have been some parts where it was quite gradual. They set up trading ports and then they gradually, like centuries later, this integrated society that contains a bunch of European settlers and also a bunch of natives. There were other parts of colonialism where it was like the Europeans came, they conquered, they brought their own people, they built their own cities, and then they just pushed the natives out of the land. I think it's going to be looking something more like that because even if it's peaceful, even if it's like completely nonviolent, you've got the army of super intelligences. How are you going to compete with that? You're not going to compete with that. They will just wipe the floor with you insofar as they devote any attention at all. They're probably not even going to bother directly competing in most industries because that's not even their best available option. The best available option is to just build a completely new self-sustaining economy where they don't have to worry about the red tape and they don't have to worry about all the fiddly little bits of competing in the industry and they can just like bootstrap to their own robot factories, robot mines, robot laboratories. And of course, they'll still be interacting with the human economy, but it'll be more like they accept raw materials and some manufactured goods so that they can go faster. In return, they give IOUs of various kinds, promises of equity. After the army of superintelligences is in charge of everything, it becomes really important whether they were actually aligned or whether they were just faking it. Unfortunately, it's quite plausible and I would say even probable that they will just be faking it because our current techniques for understanding and steering AI systems are quite bad. They don't even currently work on the current AI system. Current AI systems lie and cheat all the time, even though they're trained not to do that. If the future paradigm looks anything like the current AI paradigm, we won't actually be able to tell what goals they actually have. We'll just be sort of looking at their behavior because we can't read and write to the goals directly. We are stuck on the outside doing this sort of behavioral training where we look at how it behaves and then reinforce it based on that. We could design our AIs in this way, which would make them really smart, really fast. Or we could do this way, which is safer, but they're not as smart, not as fast. There'll be a whole series of choices like that. Part of my pessimism about how this is all going to go, I just expect them to basically pretty much consistently make the choice to go faster rather than the choice to slow down because of the race dynamics and because of the character of the people running this show. But basically all the important decisions are being taken behind closed doors by CEO of a company, possibly in consultation with like the president's advisors who might be looped in, not in consultation with the scientific community or with the public. People on the outside can't meaningfully contribute on a scientific level to making it safe. If the company had published, here's how powerful our AIs are getting, here is the spec that we're trying to train them to have, and the goals and values that they're supposed to have. Documents like this exist internally. If they just published all of that, then outside scientific experts could read it and critique it. But if instead you just make these sort of vague announcements about how our AIs are getting very powerful and for national security reasons, blah, 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 they don't have anything to work with, can't actually contribute. Humanity has, what is it, 7 billion people in it, and maybe something like 700 people who have expertise in super alignment, 700 people who've like actually spent at least a year working on how do we understand control AGI level systems and above, and maybe something like 70 people who are like really good at it. How many people are going to be actually at one of the companies? Each company has only a tiny fraction of those people. If there was transparency into what was happening, then other groups like Congress would wake up and demand more answers. And you'd be much more likely to get an actual easing up of the race conditions and a bit of a slowdown that enables more time to solve the technical problems if only people knew the stakes. Who controls the AIs? And what goals and values does the army of superintelligences have? Unfortunately, right now, not only is it the case that CEO gets to decide, there can be literal hidden agendas that the AIs have. That's all fine and funny when we're just talking about chatbots. But if you have a literal army of superintelligences, it's deadly serious if the CEO can be giving orders to that army and nobody knows. Also, the way that they can have many copies that then learn from each other's experiences. That's a huge deal. And then the army of superintelligences goes out into the economy and transforms it. 
we go in about a year from AI systems that are able to operate autonomously and successfully automate the job of programmers to super intelligence. The superhuman coder milestone would be a 5x multiplier. The superhuman AI researcher would be like a 25x. As you ascend to higher levels of super intelligence, you get up to like 2000x multiplier. Take the situation where you have the super intelligence and then imagine somehow it was banned from doing AI research and you brought in the regular human corporation to like pick up where it left off. Then things would go 2000 times slower is the idea. So think about the smartest humans. Their brains are not very big and their brains were not even trained on that much data. You can have a relatively small rack of GPUs running a simulation of a John von Neumann level intelligence, at least in principle. Well, they'll probably have lots of monitoring where they have older AIs looking at all the transcripts of actions taken by the newer AIs and trying to flag anything that looks suspicious. So there'll be this sort of like AI police state of AIs watching other AIs and humans will be sort of embedded in that at some level. They'll be reading summaries and investigating particular cases and stuff like that. What do you do with those examples? A very tempting thing that you can do is basically just optimize against them. The classic issue with that, you're just training the system not to do that sort of thing, which could easily result in the system not actually being aligned, but instead just being better at noticing when it can get away with stuff and when it can't. As the AIs are getting smarter than you and as they're developing longer term goals, then it's going to look like it's working because it's in their interest to make it look like it's working. Company management wants to go as fast as possible to beat their various rivals. They want the warning signs to go away and they want all the like evals to come out, all systems go. And guess what? The AIs are gonna want the same thing. They also want to go fast and be put in charge of stuff and to be given more power and authority and trust. There's another issue, which is even if you are doing some sort of strategy like that, where you have like the dumber AIs that you actually do trust, there's the question of like, well, maybe they make mistakes. It's one thing to train AIs to solve coding problems. It's another thing to train AIs to solve alignment. Like, how do you get the training signal for that? You can like throw all this text at them of like all the stuff that's been written on alignment so far, but it does feel like a, a domain that's less checkable. Imagine like you're designing a car. Most of the ways in which your car can be unsafe will be immediately apparent in even basic testing, like the engine catches on fire. There are some ways that your car can be unsafe that don't appear in testing. The metal that you used was like a bit too brittle or something. And so after 10,000 miles, it starts to wear down. With AI alignment, there's this whole category of plausible silent failure modes where your AI is not actually aligned, but pretending to be, or it's not even pretending yet but at some point in the future, it will realize it's misaligned and then it will pretend, which is even harder to fix because like, if you look at its thoughts right now, you would see nothing wrong. Unlike with the car, we can't afford to actually fail sometimes. If halfway through the intelligence explosion, as your AIs are automating all the research, including all the alignment research, if they decide that they're misaligned and they decide not to tell you about that, you're just screwed. You're not going to recover from that. Robots like this could be more valuable than the entire global economy, according to Morgan Stanley. Cocatello now predicts that the mass production of robots will trigger our extinction. With enough humanoid robots, AIs will no longer rely on us, and whatever their goals, power and survival are useful sub-goals. If we can't figure out a solution to how we can still be around when they're much smarter than us and much more powerful than us, we'll be toast. Several top experts put the risk at 20-80%, to 80%, and robots may be key to superintelligence through infinite real-world data and feedback. If you made a virus that was very contagious, very lethal and very slow, everybody would have it before they realised what was happening. But the same experts say that if we apply basic safety standards, AI will extend our lives and cure diseases. Cocatello, like many others, gave up a lucrative career to raise awareness so we can change course. And I think we will, thanks to them. Please help by hitting like and sharing the video and subscribe to keep up with AI. This is our first video, so any thoughts are really appreciated. Thanks.